Hi, I am reporter Brian D. Hill with USWGO Alternative News. I am interviewing Elton M. Christman Jr., uh, retired after 34 years from the aerospace industry, working for Boeing, NASA, Bell Telephone Laboratories, and Lockheed Martin Corporation. I am interviewing this man today. And so, uh, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, doing good. And so, uh, so, uh, what, uh, what all did you do in your line of work, uh, briefly? I started early in the 1960s working at Cape Canaveral on the rocket test program. First working on the Minuteman missile, and then the Saturn rockets uh, that were eventually used for the moon landing. After that time, uh, after the moon landing, I uh, went to work for Bell Telephone Laboratories on the Safeguard anti-ballistic missile system. And after that project was over with, uh, I went to work for <clears throat> Lockheed Martin Corporation. Actually, it was Lockheed Corporation first, and then the Martin Company, and then the two companies joined to become Lockheed Martin. During the Lockheed Martin uh, period of my employment, I was working on the low observables, the stealth technology, uh, which I can't go into in any more detail than that this time. Uh, my specialty at that time with Lockheed Martin was non-destructive testing, such as x-ray, ultrasound, uh, eddy current, but I had a very special area of infrared thermography, and I hold several patents in this area of infrared thermographic analysis uh, that has been used in both by NASA and by other aerospace companies uh, for evaluating solid rocket motors and structures. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. It's been a full 34 years. That's for sure. Uh, what is uh, what I've been hearing about the term uh, P-code? P-code is a uh, term that was referred to earlier on the deployment of the GPS system where it provided an offset that did not give the general public 100% accuracy that was available in the GPS system. It was done on purpose such that it would keep a foreign country, uh, possibly an enemy of the United States, from using the GPS as a guidance system for their weapons. Uh, there hasn't been anything said about P-code for many years, and it's somewhat of a mystery to me as to what happened to it whether it still exists or whether it is no longer available. Um, it's really a means that if you didn't have the code, you couldn't get the full accuracy of the GPS. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people uh, use this GPS, like uh, airplanes. Uh, a lot of people use it for... Uh, residential like cars where a lot of people go traveling and they don't want to get lost so a lot of people uh, rely on GPS. And yes they do and uh, the accuracy that I'm speaking of is a lot more accurate than you would need for following roads. Uh, the accuracy that uh, is available today is is quite good. Uh, is it as good as the system is able to produce? No it's not but there again, it's the mystery that I'm a little curious about as to what happened to the, to the term P-code, meaning the ability to use 100% of the accuracy of the GPS. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Uh, what happened to uh, P-code? The last that I heard about the P-code system was that uh, sometime during the Clinton administration years, and I just don't remember exactly when in that 
two terms of a president that he served, uh, that the, the P code system was no longer being used. And it just, that's the mystery, if you will. Uh, what happened? Hmm. Uh, how did uh, P code affect you? It really affected me only in that it was uh, something that I had access to for my military guidance and, and programs that we were using. Uh, it was more of a an added expense because you had to safeguard the actual PICO device when you were using it in an aircraft, a helicopter, a boat, or a system. And uh, once it was eliminated, uh, we no longer had that extra expense to uh, worry about. And so basically you couldn't really uh, use an accurate GPS without this so-called P-code box? It was the other way around. When they wanted to turn the system to be less accurate, they could, through the P-code system, make it less active or accurate for the general public's use. Um, other than that, I, um, it, it it was a savings to us when we didn't have to safeguard the equipment to the same extent. Mm -hmm. Do you think it could be used again in the future? Possibly, if it still exists in the system. I, I haven't seen any of the equipment or any indication, but I'm not deeply involved with that anymore since retirement. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, that answers all the questions for that. Uh, I heard you had worked on the stealth aircraft. Uh, yes, I worked uh, on several projects on that, but that information is still not widely disseminated. I really can't discuss it in detail. It's very interesting. It was very challenging. Hmm. It, it is was then and it is now state-of-the-art. Yeah, I mean, I, I've looked at a picture of it, and I, I mean, it's just, it's just something that uh, I haven't seen before in that line of crafts. That's, that's true, and it's, it's evolving all the time, and it's, uh, it will continue to evolve. Uh, I had actually uh, interviewed uh, Preston Nichols. He was on the, in the Mon Montauk Project. Have you heard about him? No, I can't say I have. I don't. Uh, the name doesn't uh, ring a bell with me. Oh, okay. Uh, just curious. Okay. So uh, you were involved in uh, patent number four eight five four two uh, seven two four. I believe that is one I have. Uh, I think I eight patents, and uh, it's hard to keep all those numbers remembered. Uh, well, here it is over here. Okay. Method and a uh, method of an apparatus for thermographic evaluation of spot welds. Yes, uh, Mark Adams uh, and I uh, at uh, Lockheed Georgia Corporation uh, in <clears throat> Marietta, Georgia, uh, came up with this invention. And it was a method of using thermographic evaluation, infrared thermography, to evaluate spot welds. Uh, spot welds are small wells created in between two metal joints and usually a structure that uses those has thousands of them and uh, this was a method of being able to do that evaluation on each of the spot wells very quickly and getting a hundred percent assurance that we had indications that the wells were good uh, all right uh so what else uh would you like to uh say not much at this time. I would be more than glad to have another interview at, at any time if you have a specific question. Uh, if you, you think about it for a minute, with 34 years uh, worth of experience in this area, uh, I could talk for hours and hours and it would become meaningless. Uh, it would probably not be that interesting, but if you, if you come up with a specific area that you'd like me to comment on, I'll be glad to do that in the future. Because mm -hmm. I understand we don't live that far apart. Uh, you know, as far as uh, distance between my home and yours, so we could arrange to get together. All right. Um, I'm thinking of one more quick question. Uh, have you ever 
uh, at least, uh, you know, you don't have to say any details, but uh, have you ever worked in uh, Area 51? I have no comment on that at all. Well, hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for the interview. You're very welcome.